Here we go, here we go. Another care collab, so welcome to this video. I had to write all the names down, so let's get right into it because this is a good one. Today, joining on the Care Collab for the general care of a Dendrobium Nobly hybrid, the channels are the following. Danny's Orchid Journey, Svetlana Orchid Passions in Deutschland, What's Up Orchids, Honeybees and Orchids, Attainable Green, Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, Tropical Plants Finland, Lynn Smith, and Ed's Orchids. Woohoo! Welcome. Thank you everybody for doing your videos, for joining in. The reason this is seems to be like one of those, you would say, well, everybody grows that clearly because there are so many channels able to participate, but it responds differently for everybody around the world. I would say I have seen some supersized Dendrobium nobilis, and then I've seen some that struggle. So in my case, I would say I have had one that struggled for the first two years of being with me. And I'm going to share my experience about that struggle because I think a lot of it has to do with what these nurseries pump into these nobly hybrids that we get in the garden center and in the big box stores, the regular available ones, just like they would with the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids. And then you get them into your house and suddenly it's not doing what everybody says it does. Easy growing, will come back, no need for dry winter rest, no faffing around. And, but it doesn't do what everybody says. So I found it a little bit more complicated and challenging when I got mine home. And I'm gonna share my confusion with you. And I believe that now year three, I've got my Dendrobium nobly to a point where it should grow and behave normally. So what do I mean by normally? Well, to my understanding, a Dendrobium nobly hybrid grows new growths at the base of every cane for the next season that you pump full of lots of fertilizer, lots of water while it grows so that you can get the similar sized canes as previously. However, I do find these to behave differently, at least in my case, and I do only own one Nobly hybrid because I was watching it and thinking, is it worth getting another one? Until I didn't fully understand its growth habit, I didn't want to come and get something into my collection and not understand what it is doing. Now I have an understanding, and I believe if I see another one, I might get another one because they can also live outside for the entire year in my climate. We'll get to that. The normal growth habit is it finishes blooming, it starts a new growth at the base of the cane, and then you fertilize it and get it growing very, very strongly throughout the season so that next year you have more blooms. In my case, that did not happen. So I got this in the winter of 18 and then it bloomed out of season. But the subsequent growths that I got on mine were keikis, five of them in total. <laughs> That's the little ones you see down here in the pot, the ones without the leaves on them. I plonked them back into the pot because I've got space and I thought, well, why not? Wasn't expecting anything else and I just thought maybe my orchid is, you know, diseased, garden center, who knows? Having said that, those keikis bloomed and they looked really bizarre because all the blooms were down here as opposed to upright in a cane and it looked like a bunch of flowers that had been dumped into the trash can with all the blooms here and then the naked canes sticking up. So that was my season of 20, my blooming show of my nobly. However, now comes the season, the growing season of 20. And I'm expecting wonderful new growth at the base of all my keikis. Hmm, I did get some, but it did manage to push out one cane and you can see it still hasn't reached its potential like all the others. And then there's another one in the back here, which is even half that size. Why am I saying all this? Well, if you have one and it is not performing for you as you would normally expect it to, supposedly easy growers, I believe strongly that there's a lot of acclimating that these orchids have to do when they come into our home because where they are cultivated in their perfect environment in a nursery, they are pumped full of hormones 
in or and they have a cycle with regards to how cold, how much light, in order to set up blooming for the right time of selling, be it during the winter as gifts or during, you know, early spring like now. Either way, however they plan to do it, the orchid is completely out of cycle most of the time when you bring it into your home. So when it starts to grow keikis at a rate of knots, I would say panic not. It is just the orchid in stress doing what it does in order to then hopefully survive. So in the season of 20, I then did get a new growth at the base of one keiki, which is this one, and the base of another keiki in the back here. Here's a keiki there, which is this cane. And then I had a couple of growths in the front on another keiki, which actually died off because here comes the pest issue. In my environment, the mealybugs love these soft, beautiful, yummy salad looking like leaves. I have to be very careful. I can't go in with my alcohol spray, just random. That's what I did and I rotted that growth off. So I have to be very careful and very vigilant that these growths now for this season, starting at the base, will finally be the ones in year three to reach the size of the canes it came with. There are different kinds of Dendrobium nobly hybrids, obviously. Some of them have canes double the size of mine. This is a more compact, smaller kind, which I much prefer. You know, I mean, I do have space in the winter, but not in the summer so much because everybody's outside in the summer and they still need to be protected. So let's go to the temperature and, and the climate. Being in southern Spain, I have a very mild winter. For me, it's far too cold, but let's just say it's mild. I never go down to freezing. And this nobly hybrid can take the temperatures all the way down to five degrees Celsius. I don't ever stop watering. It lives outside, it is not protected. When it rains, it gets watered. The only thing I don't do during the winter is fertilize it because clearly there's nothing going on and the orchid is not dormant as so to say, but there is no need to fertilize if there are no new growths. But she gets watered a lot. I do get sometimes rain showers of three to four days. And then if I let the pot stand out in the bright sun because I leave her in full light during the winter, then I will always water the pot and keep the reservoir at least halfway filled with water. Excuse the stuff down there. So this reservoir is not quite full and you can see the, the rim of the green. That is the winter level. And eventually now, as she's coming into active growth, aha, and she is in bloom, I'm starting to fertilize at this point because she is really doing something, needs the energy or the buds. I don't want to deplete the canes. I don't see her yet as one of those big, vigorous orchids where you can sort of leave her alone for a little bit longer. Every little bit of help that a nobly can get from you that is trying to acclimate or is pushing buds and blooms is of a great benefit. I go by what the orchid tells me. I do not fertilize when the orchid has a nubbin stage. Now this is not a nubbin per se anymore, but the nubbins look like this along the canes. And if that's the stage the nubbins are at, I still don't fertilize, but she is getting watered. Once the nubbins push out and look like buds, that is when I start to fertilize. At this point, when they are clear buds, I cannot prove either way whether if you fertilize too soon, the nubbins turn into keikis or not. That is not what happened with my orchid when I got her. My orchid produced a lot of keikis because of the stress and the acclimating process. So I'm not going to mess around with my orchid to try to test that. Maybe one day, if there's a lot of keikis going on, I can start that process again and then test whether fertilizing makes a difference. With the species Dendrobiums, I would be much more cautious because yes, they are much more finicky, they have their quirks, and it could be that too soon fertilizing will instigate keikis. I do not know. I do not own a nobly species. So I go now at 300 parts per million. When she drinks up her reservoir, I flush her through twice and I use my mask as a measure. But the reservoir today is not empty. However, I am going to flush her today because I am getting new roots. 
and I don't want my top dry layer there of the LECA to start sucking any kind of juices out of the new roots. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a root tip there. So now I have to be very, very mindful that this is going on. She is still in bloom. She's starting new growths. This keiki is now actually, let me show you. This keiki is growing a new growth of its own. So eventually I will separate it out because this is going to be, I have to be very, very careful with my flushing on this one. Here we go. There's another new growth coming right back there. Happy days at the base of the established cane. Let me correct that. Two new growths. I wasn't expecting that because I've been keeping my eye out on this one regarding mealybugs. Now I've got my work cut out to make sure that I don't have any mealybugs sneaking up on me and up onto the new growth and messing out my 2021 season. So what I'm gonna do is try and very carefully just flush her through right where the new roots are. I have plenty of breeze today, so I'm not too concerned if anything gets onto a new growth. I'd like to avoid it so that we don't have that problem in the future. But still, because of those new roots, she's getting a flush. It could be that there's more roots from this one already going into the pot where that, that I cannot see, and that's what I want to avoid. So in the winter, as I mentioned, full sun in my climate, that is why my canes are a little bit more yellow. It has nothing to do with the kind of orchid that I have. Everything is a little bit more yellow because of the amount of light I've given her. In the summer, or like now, I have a blooming alley. Of course, she is in bloom. She now sits in my blooming alley so that I can enjoy the blooms. But that is also her forever place during the summer. Because of the hot, hot winds that I have that would easily dry out and burn little growths like this to a crisp. And I want to avoid that. So in my summer, she has bright, bright shade in the south-facing side of what I call my blooming alley, where she lives at this moment and where she will live for the rest of the summer. Once the temperatures then get a little bit cooler again and the sun angle is a bit lower in the sky, she goes back out onto the east side on the corner of the terrace table there where the sun, from sunrise to sunset, is where she gets her light. That is about six to seven hours a day in winter when the sun shines in winter, and we do get that quite a lot down here. So my issue here is this year to see that I get canes that surpass this one, whether they will reach the old original size or not remains to be seen. But that is the plan and that's what I would like to see happening. And then I am certain that the majority of things that go wrong with the Dendrobium nobili type that we can find so readily in our big box stores the garden centers, I am certain that the quirks that they have as to why they're not performing or doing well is the entire rigmarole of having to get away from the hormones and the acclimating process. It's not that straightforward with these guys. Once they have their mojo and they like it where you are, the rest is just simple, easy going and straightforward. Oh, let me just touch upon the fragrance. This one smells like freesias. She's a no ID. She smells like freesias, but today, without much sun, I'm getting mustard. So that was a bit ick because I went straight in this morning and I was mm, da la la, and I went for a sniff and it was like yo. Now you just want to vinerbostian, dip it into the mustard and eat it. <laughs> Weird, never happened before. But a very very intense fragrance of freesias is what she normally has as well. And their blooms will glisten in the sun. They have a crystalline kind of texture to them. They will last about three to four weeks, maybe more, but because they bloom, they don't open all at once. It will be about a six week show until she's completely bloomed out. So I'm really grateful actually to see all these new growths I'm already getting. This is awesome. Happy days. We'll keep her nicely fed and then we'll see if the quirks I'm talking about 
apply to this one and I do believe so. I strongly believe that this is all about the quirkiness of getting out the hormones that are pumped into these orchids that are so commercially readily available. Let me just say thank you once again to the channels. Danny's Orchid Journey, Svetlana Orchid Passions in Deutschland, What's Up Orchids, Honeybees and Orchids, Attainable Green, Fernanda Nathimento Orchids and Succulents, Tropical Plants Finland, Lynn Smith and Ed's Orchids. Thank you everybody for taking the time to do your videos, to upload them, and then sharing your growing experience with these commercially readily available hybrids that are supposedly super easy to grow, but will give you a headache, in my opinion, from Jump Street when they arrive to your home. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.